tops the pack with a new high of 36 percent. His closest rival, Senator Ted Cruz, follows far behind at 16 percent. You can see Cruz, Carson, and Ruby all kind of bunched up in the teens, and then it plummets uh, from there. Let's talk about this with our roundtable. Is this the race now? Trump far ahead, mm -hmm. these other three, Carson, Cruz, Rubio, and then kind of no one else? Yeah, it seems to be. As lamentable as I find his rhetoric and as unserious as I find his policies, uh, unfortunately, he gets daily affirmations, uh, uh, you know, whether it's in San Bernardino or Paris, um, uh, that he is taking the threats or he is perceived as taking these threats more seriously than other Republican candidates and then the president and, and the Democratic field. And, and, and you know, you can, you can talk about, again, the unseriousness of his solutions, but when he's able to bank on that and traffic on this kind of fear, it's really hard to see how he gets knocked off his, his pedestal. Ken, I know that the Republican establishment doesn't take its marching orders from the Washington Post editorial page, but <laughs> uh, today's editorial calling for Republican leaders to state we will not endorse him if he becomes the nominee, does reflect a very serious concern among Republican establishment figures. Well, and certainly we all look to the Post for guidance on things like this. Not. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, for months and months and months now, the top two or three candidates in virtually every national Republican poll have been anti-Washington, anti-establishment candidates. Uh, I was with, I met David Hoppe this week, uh, Ryan's new chief of staff from K Street. Mm -hmm. which is not encouraging, and said, D does the House leadership understand they are responsible for Trump, by which I mean the establishment? Well, no, no, he's uh, really the perfect anti-Obama. You know, there were 16 other candidates that filled that role. They don't get it. And as they don't get it, they're going to keep behaving the same old way they've been behaving. Trump is not a response so much to President Obama as he is the Trump phenomena mm -hmm. to, to the these, failed right. Republican leadership in the U.S. Congress. There's one, Nira, I want to ask you about a moment that Hillary Clinton had on the campaign trail uh, this week when a woman in the audience asked her a question that was a little bit uncomfortable. Take a listen. Secretary Clinton, you recently came out to say that all rape victims should be believed. But would you say that about Johnita Broderick, Kathleen Wiley, and or Paula Jones? Should we believe them as well? Well, I would say that everybody should be believed at first until they are disbelieved based on evidence. Uncomfortable. Is this something that Hillary Clinton's going to hear more of, you think? I don't think so, actually, and I think she handled it really well. And I think the reality is that we've, she's been on the campaign trail for a year or so almost. Uh, she'll be on it going forward. This is her race. It's about who she will be as president. I think it's good for people to feel free they can ask any questions, but I think she handled it well. And I don't actually see this, you know, this made coverage because it's not a question she gets very often because I think more people are concerned about what she will do as president than anything that happened in the past. But when you have something so incongruous with her previous statements about those three women, it's going to be back. Uh, and I, it, really? I mean, really? It, it's it going to be, be back. We have another, if she's the nominee, mm -hmm. if she's not indicted, we have a year more of Hillary Clinton. And this kind of contrast with her own past vicious attacks on these women, whether you think they were legitimate or not, are going to be back.